Okay, so now we're gonna talk about um, blow drying styling, also known as air dry styling. You wanna know that your blow dryers can come in a variety of styles. Um, they make, recently they make the Dyson one, which almost looks like a ring light and it produces heat and it's very expensive at almost $600. Although typically a lot of your dryers will be around the price range of one to 200. Your blow dryers can also get very hot. Some of them can get as hot as a flat iron, if not um, just under. So you can burn the client's scalp if you're not careful. Always practice on um, low heat first when you're practicing on someone else and then increase it. You can make the blow dryer cool, low, medium, or high depending on the setting, and you can increase the velocity. What the velocity is is how much air is being pushed out. Is it thin, medium, or heavy? Most blow dryers also have a cool shot, so when you're setting the hair with the blow dryer, you're gonna get it warm and then press the cool button to make it cold. Another thing too is that some blow dryers are ionic. What that means is the ions are negative ions and they help produce um, sleek straight hair hairstyles. If you turn the ions off, you can make the hair um, a little bit more, not frizzy, but have more texture. And that might be ideal for the client that has very fine hair and they want some body in it. So always um, use caution when purchasing a blow dryer, make an informed choice. Um, blow drying is a technique, or blow dry styling, they define it as a technique of drying and styling damp hair um, in one operation and it revolutionized our industry. So go on to the days where people have to sit in, under the dryer with rollers. You can get a similar effect if you style correctly. They make blow dryer brushes that break away and sit in the hair like rollers, so you kind of combine the two. Um, know that you can have many styling tools for blow dryer. You also want to know, is the client able going to be able to style his or hair at home out? his or her, her hair at home. Got tongue tied there. Um, because so many products uh, clients don't know how to use. Some product brands, if it's a high-end brand, you only need this much product, they might be using this much and say, well, my hair's really flat. You gotta explain to them why, how you use it. Typically, getting the back of the hair is always a problem for people because as a hairdresser, you're able to get back there and create the shape that they want. So you wanna keep them coming back to you, but you also wanna give them some education and use it as a chance to sell some product. Um, so there are some basic tools. They give you the blow dryer and its attachments, combs, picks, brushes, styling products. So first of all, let's start with the blow dryer. This is gonna be an electrical appliance designed for drying and styling hair. Its main parts are a handle, slotted nozzle, small fan, heating element, speed and heat controls. Some blow dryers also come with a cooling button used to help set the hair. The temperature control switch helps to produce a steady stream of air at the desired temperature. The blow dryer's nozzle attachment or concentrator is a directional feature that creates a concentrated stream of air. The diffuser is an attachment that causes the air to flow more softly and helps to accentuate or keep a textural definition. You can think of your um, diffuser. It's really good for curly hair and they come in different sizes. Some of them look like a honeycomb, others look like a little hand and it, use it to kind of push the hair up and dry it. So you usually put it on warm and keep it on there for a few minutes, always test the air, see it's dry, and then you can put it on cool to set it in place. Diffusing the hair is an art and it's really um, complicated at first, but once you become familiar with it, you can get a lot of textures. Some people do the diffuser to fake a permed look. Um, others will actually set the hair, wet set it with perm rods, dry it under a hood dryer, and then take the perm rods out and use a diffuser with some hairspray and get a vintage look without having to compromise the hair's integrity by using a real perm. So, concentrators can also be thin, big, or large. If you do it without the concentrator, um, some stylists do that. I prefer a rough dry with my concentrator. That's just personal preference. Always make sure you keep your blow dryer clean. Back in the 80s, a lot of stylists will tell you when they first had blow dryers, you'd look into it and actually see the little um, hot rings get red hot. There were times in the 80s and 90s when the blow dryers would catch fire. You'd be blow drying them, and my teacher was telling me at the time, should be blood drying a client's hair, all of a sudden a big old flame would pop up in the back, they'd have to turn it off and like beat it out. When I started um, teaching cosmetology, I didn't witness this, but one of the cos teachers before she retired, they had a very old blow dryer, it was somewhere in the classroom and I guess a student had it plugged in. This dryer had like 20 plus years of wear and tear and finally just gave out because it had so much air caught, not hair, air and dust caught in it that it ignited. The person had thrown the um, dryer down and actually had beat out the flame. So know that you always want to keep the back of your blow dryer clean. Some of them include cleaning tools. Uh, otherwise, it can just burn out. I know that some dryers will actually smoke and spark, so you always got to be careful of that. Um, know that 
Also, when you're um, wrapping the cord, this is my biggest pet peeve. If the blow dryer or any hot tool is hot and you're wrapping it around it, the heat is gonna damage the wires. So get in the habit of doing the S-shapes and strapping up your cord. Don't let your cord get all ruined or you'll ruin the dryer. Next are combs and picks. Combs and picks are designed to distribute um, and part the hair. They come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes. The length and spacing of the teeth vary from one comb to another. Teeth that are close together, like this one, remove definition from the curl and create smooth surface. Widely spaced teeth shape larger directions of hair for a more textured surface. Combs with a pick at one end lift the hair away from the head. So if you're styling an afro, you're gonna be using a pick. Also know that if you um, set someone's hair with a curling wand and you want to brush those waves out, do not use a comb like this or you'll frizz it. What you wanna do is get a wider tooth comb and just gently brush it with one hand, distribute those waves so it gives it some texture. Next are brushes. Brushes come in a wide variety of sizes and styles. Make sure that you get a brush that you can clean because some state boards don't allow brushes like bore brushes that are wooden. You can't effectively clean wood um, in a salon, even though stylists use them anyway. So the classic styling brush is a half round rubber based brush. These brushes are typically, they typically have either seven or nine rows of rounded tip nylon bristles. They are heat resistant, anti-static, and ideal for smoothing and untangling all types of hair. While they are perfect for blow drying precision haircuts, where little volume is desired, they are less suitable for smooth classic looks. Paddle brushes with their large flat bases are well suited for mid-length to longer hair lengths. Some have a ball tip nylon pins and staggered pin patterns that help keep the hair from snagging. Grooming brushes are oval with a mixture of bore and nylon bristles. The bore bristles help distribute the scalp oils all over the hair shaft, giving it shine. The nylon bristles stimulate the circulation of blood to the scalp. Grooming brushes are particularly useful for adding polish and shine to fine and medium hair and are great for combing out updos. It'll help give it natural shine, especially when you add the appropriate products. Vent brushes, there can be paddled with little holes in between them and slits with their ventilated design are used to speed up the blow drying process and they're ideal for blow drying fine hair and adding lift at the scalp. Typically when you rough dry the hair, you'll do a vent brush, get everything smooth, get it in the right direction, add a little volume, and then you go back in with your round brush to style it. Round brushes come in various diameters. The client's hair should be long enough to wrap twice around the brush. So two times you want to get the hair to wrap around the brush. Don't have someone with very long hair and use a very small brush. You're going to tangle it up and it's going to make removing it very difficult. I also prefer to get one that has the bore bristles and the um, nylon in there because I'm able to get the polishing effect but also make the hair easy to untangle. The client's hair should be long enough to wrap twice around the brush. Round brushes often have natural bristles, sometimes with nylon mixed in for better grip. Smaller brushes add more curl, larger brushes straighten the hair and bevel the ends of the hair. Medium round brushes can be used to lift the hair at the scalp. Some round brushes have metal cylinder bases, so the heat from the blow dryer is transferred to the metal base, creating a stronger curl that is similar to those produced with an electric roller. Always use a cooling button of the blow dryer before releasing the section to set the hair into new shape. Lastly, a teasing brush is a thin nylon styling brush that has a tail for sectioning along with a narrow row of bristles. Teasing brushes are perfect for backcombing the hair and the sides of the bristles are ideal for smoothing it into your desired style. So sectioning clips are either metal or plastic. Typically most are plastic and they're ideal. Their names are you know pretty much self-explanatory. They're ideal for you know sectioning away the hair, getting wet hair out of the way. You always want to make sure you have the wet hair clipped up so when you're blow drying you're not going to start here and have the dry hair hang on wet hair because that's a mess. But when that wet hair hits um, dry hair, the dry hair is going to open up, accept that moisture, and you get frizz. So make sure you rough dry really, really good. Then keep that wet or damp hair, if it's a little damp, away from the freshly blown out hair. Otherwise, you'll ruin it. So styling products. Um, they Styling products, the book says it can be thought of as liquid tools. They give a style more hold. They can be used to increase or decrease the amount of curl. They can be used to add shine. And when correctly, they enhance the style and they make the styling process easier. They're also a good point of retail, so make sure you're using the styling products in the salon. That way you can say, like, look, here's what I use in your hair. Take the product off the shelf, put it in their hand, and say, if you purchase this, you know, you'll, you can style your hair just like this, and I'll teach you some tips. That's a way you can sell to the client. 
Um, there's so many styling products in the market and some of them all behave differently. The book just gives you the basic examples of what products we work with. Some products kind of bend the line of like, you know, there's um, foam gels or um, pomades that behave like a, a wax or clay based products. There's so many things in the market now. Um, so they give you the basics. The foam is also known as a mousse. It's light, airy, and whipped. It resembles a shaving foam. It builds body and volume into the hair. You massage it into damp hair to highlight a textural movement, or you can blow dry the hair straight to add some body. Foam is good for fine hair because it does not weigh the hair down. It will hold for six to eight hours in dry conditions. Conditioning foams help to add more moisture and they're good for um, porous hair. Gel is a thickened styling preparation that comes in a tuber bottle. Gels create the strongest control for slicked or molded styles and they add distinct texture definitions when spread with the fingers. So you can make spikes with it, you can put it in there to get some hold. When hair is brushed out, gel creates long lasting body. Firm hold gel formulations may overwhelm fine hair because of the high resin content. This is not a concern if the fine hair is molded into the lines of a style and brushed throughout when dry. Also be careful on really blonde hair. If you put too much gel, it can make the hair look darker or dirtier or discolor it. Um, any of the products mentioned, if they do contain a lot of alcohol, that will fade hair color. So you always want to be mindful of that, especially hairspray on freshly colored hair. You also want to know that when you are doing your products, call it cocktailing or layering. Typically people prefer layering. You layer using your thinnest product and onto your thick, uh, thickest. So to prep the hair, you'll maybe you'll put a little bit of um, natural heat protectant, it's a little bit looser, or some kind of serum. Know that oil seals in dryness, so use a moisturizer first and then an oil. But start with your thinnest product and use your thickest. So if you have a, a thinner cream, put that in the hair to prep it for heat styling. And if you're adding a mousse or a gel, then add that because that's thicker, it has more hold. If you do that um, the thickest first, it's gonna block putting that thin product on. So liquid gels are known as texturizers. They are similar to firm hold gels, except that they are lighter and less viscous, meaning um, it has more liquid, more liquidy. Something that has a high viscosity, like a pomade, is very thick. They allow for easy styling, defining, and molding. When brushing, they add volume and body to the style. They're good for all hair types and offer firmer, longer holding um, options for fine hair with the least amount of heaviness and they give a lighter, more moderate hold for normal and coarse hair type. Home care recommendations regarding styling products represent a natural retailing opportunity in the salon. Um, most clients do want to learn about stylist secrets, so you know, you have a professional title, you can use it. This is also where your continuing education is important. If you do um, brand education or have a rep come out, they will teach you how to use the products and how to retail it to them. Um, when straightening gel, gel, I almost said gel, um, my little southern accent comes out. When straightening gel is applied to damp hair ranging from wavy to extremely curly and blow dried, it creates smooth straight looking hair that provides the most hold in dry outdoor conditions. Straightening gel counters frizz by coating the hair shaft and weighing it down. This is a temporary solution that will only last from shampoo to shampoo. Also styles that use straightening gel may become undone in extreme humidity conditions. They typically have a lot of ingredients in there, like silicones that coat it. A good example of straightening gel, even though it was a liquid, was the um, Jean Frida three day straight. I remember when I was, a, you know, before I was a professional and I was in high school, I'm like, oh, let me use this. It'll be really good um, because, you know, straight hair was all rage back then. What had happened was um, it lasted, but it only lasted from shampoo to shampoo because when you style it, you're removing water, right? You're changing those hydrogen bombs. But when you add water back in, the curls come back. So you also wanna make sure you're putting like either a layer of hairspray on it or something that will prevent the humidity from affecting the hair. This is personal for all hair types. Also, if someone um, wears their hair back in a man bun or ponytail, you wanna educate your clients that doing that will also create a dent in the hair or a temporary wave because of the pressure of the ponytail. So volumizers, when sprayed into the base of fine hair and wet hair that is blown dry, they add volume, especially at the base. When a vent brush or round brush is used and the hair is not stretched too tightly around the brush, even more volume can be achieved. You may want to add a light gel or mousse to the rest of the hair for more hold, but be careful to avoid the base of the hair that has already been treated. These are gonna be your spray-ons or root lifters. You're gonna be spraying them on, blow drying upwards, putting the volume in where you want it, and then everything else you're gonna treat differently. Pomade is also known as wax and it adds considerable weight to the hair by causing strands to join together, showing separation in the hair. 
Used on dry hair, pomade makes the hair very easy to mold, allowing greater manageability. It should be used sparingly on fine hair because of the weight. A men's grooming product is usually what a pomade is. They have them for men and women alike. So silicone adds gloss and sheen to the hair while creating texture and definition. Non-oily silicone products are excellent for all hair types, either to provide lubrication and protection from the hair during blow drying or hot styling, or to finish a style by adding extra shine. When applied like hairspray, silicone spray adds shine and gloss that weight, so they're useful for all hair types. Those are going to be your shine sprays. They might come in like an oil form. Um, heat protectant might contain them. Hairsprays, also known as finishing sprays, applied in the form of a mist to hold the style in a position. It is the most widely used hairstyling hair product available in both aerosol and pump containers in a variety of, and in a variety of holding strengths. It is useful for all hair types. Finishing spray is used when the style is completed and will not be disturbed. So you'll use hairspray first and then um, finishing spray to kind of just support that style, add a little shine. A little goes a long way of both. Too much hairspray will dry the hair out. Too much finishing spray will make it look greasy. So you gotta practice and find the balance. With any kind of hair product, too much is not as good as just enough. And what that means is do too much, it won't work. If you do just enough, you'll get a great style. So practice on it, a little goes a long way. Read the directions, ask other stylists, um, engage in social media with other artists you can learn. You also wanna know um, that you can use hairspray at different times. You can um, do it when you're setting the hair if you're doing iron sets. So if you use a curling wand, then pin clip it up. Spray that to get a little bit of hold on hair that doesn't hold. Let it sag a little, spray some more hairspray, and then spray some finishing spray for extra support and shine. Um, hairsprays and gels, all the products can have a whole wide range with the holding factor, and it usually says it by a number. One is usually like, um, it depends on the brand too, some reverse it. One is not that harsh, and then 10 is like the firmest hold ever. Um, they give you a little note too on graduated haircuts, because um, they tell you all these blow drying procedures. Graduated haircuts have either long layer or short layer interiors. To blow dry graduated haircuts, use the same basic blow drying techniques that are in the back of your chapter. Um, but choose a technique that best suits length of hair. Um, some graduated haircuts you really can't get underneath, so if you put some volume in there, it looks good. Other times I've used like small rollers and just kind of set it with that. Also know that some graduate haircuts, you might just want to iron style if it's like a sleek bob, but for the mature client who wants more body, you want to use um, a blow dryer, then pin clip the um, curl down like a barrel curl, give it a little blow dry all over, and then cool shot everything to um, set it back in place, and then give it a brush out. Then put a little bit of hairspray and educate them. That's how I style my Graham's hair, um, and I think that video is somewhere on my channel. So um, we are gonna stop here, well, that was like perfect. And now we're gonna talk about thermal hairstyling, which is your curling irons, hot irons, flat irons, types of curl, and we should be able to finish the rest in one video.